Okay, we are going to. Oh, I, I have. To... He's into all in. the pod. He's yeah. like, yeah. all in. I literally make the pod around myself. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're gonna learn how to um, finish your mugs, and I'm gonna show you how to pull handles, which is a skill in itself. It takes time to learn. Okay. <laughs> Everything in here, you'll probably uh, need, I would say, 10 to 15 to 20 handles before you really start understanding it. Okay? Um, so, anyways, I'm going to show you how to pull handles. Um, and this is just one way in many different strategies of making handles. I ask you to pull your handles so that, because this is a skill... Um, it's a way that like stretch clay, okay? And it's a skill that you can employ in a variety of other applications, all right? So I'm asking you to pull your handles, all right? All of your handles must be pulled. So for example, later when you become more skilled and you want to get into like teapots or something like that, you can also pull the spouts to get them really long. Um, there's all sorts of things that you can do with it. Okay, including like really big loopy handles and anyways. All right, <clears throat> so what I want to do is show you, this is a finished mug. Um, and uh, you can see the type of craftsmanship that's involved here. It's a nice consistent handle. Um, it's got these really nice, pretty clean lines. All right. Now the trick to making handles is that, and the trick to making really clean and uh, cups with really good craftsmanship, believe it or not, is to be as efficient, efficient as possible in how you handle your cup and your and the handles. You you want to try to not like overwork your material. All right, that's when it starts to look unnatural, and your fingerprints can sometimes, you know, disrupt the natural plastic nature of the of the clay. Okay, so. <clears throat> All right, what you want to do first uh, is after you've got your pots, and you can see I've got some with slip, some without. I've got my, my pots trimmed up here. i got my feet. Everything's looking real nice and, uh, nice and good. Um, so typically what I'd want to do is pull my handles first. Okay, and you can see I have these handles right here that I just pulled. I pulled these about 20 minutes ago. <clears throat> and that's usually the type of time frame you need and after you pull your handles you want to let the moisture the surface moisture kind of evaporate so that you can pick them up and, and use them mm -hmm. all right if not they're really slippy and they're kind of hard to handle okay again there are different techniques to apply handles to where potters will actually put a piece of clay on the side of their pot pull their handle and just stick it on that's kind of more of an advanced technique, so I just want you to get used to utilizing the pooling process. All right. <clears throat> um, so usually what I do is I'll throw a bunch of pots, like I'll throw five pots, and then, well, typically I throw about a dozen. I'll throw a dozen mugs, and then I'll trim a dozen mugs, and then I'll pull a dozen handles, or I'm sorry, I pull a dozen handles, then I trim a dozen mugs, and then I put my handles on my mugs. Okay, so you want to think of your production process as being sets, right? I make my pots, I trim my pots, I put my handles on my pots. Okay, so that you don't, it's very inefficient to make a, you know, to trim a pot, put a handle on it. Trim a pot, put a handle on it. You kind of just want to do everything at once in groups and bring it and through and finish, bring it through the finishing process. All right, um, so here we go. Uh, Okay, now what I usually like is to have really nice plastic clay, aged clay. All right, it, it, when you're pulling handles, it really needs to be plastic. Um, and it's sometimes challenging in a big studio like this, all right, to keep up with aged clay. Um, so we're just going to do the best we can. Um, this clay feels pretty good. It's a little bit stiffer, too. I kind of like that for my handles. All right, now. We're going to go from this to this, okay? And you can see I've already got my handle kind of set up in the shape, all right? So that I can just cut it, cut it, and then stick it on. All right, so this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get it and place it in this shape so it can stiffen up and we can use it. All right, now, one of the biggest 
Uh, one of the things you want to do first is just kind of make this like little spike here. And technically, you could just, you know, trim this out or like roll this out into like a little coil and that's almost a handle right there. And then all you do is you use the pulling process to kind of stretch it out and make it really consistent and taper. Okay, I prefer to kind of pull my handles more from um, this type of position. Okay, so I'll make these like little spikes here and I'll make you know however handles, ever how many handles that I need I'll make these little shapes. The biggest thing that you don't want to do as a beginning potter is use too much clay for pulling a handle. All right, you you can pull these handles and they're like you know that long and that's for a pitcher. Okay, we only need a handle that's just a couple of inches. So the biggest mistake that potters make is they use like a huge piece of clay and then you know it's really kind of hard to control. Okay, the other thing too is that when you're pulling this. Um, the, the trick is to understanding just how to just apply enough force to just stretch the clay out, okay? Um, and that's what is the hardest part of this because it's very easy when you pull down on this to just like rip it apart. So you, that's going to happen to you. You just, you have to get, you have to be patient with yourself and just get used to the process. Okay, typically when I'm pulling handles, I like to pull handles on like a, a table. Um, I don't want to use the wooden table because it'll just get oversaturated with water and it'll warp and bubble up and stuff. So usually what I do is if I'm not using the sink over there, then I'll get one of... Uh, oh man, that's where I'll put my handle. Mm -hmm. Oh, smart. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I, I get one of these big plasti bats and you can see that there's a textured side and a smooth side. But you want to use the smooth side. All right, this just acts as like a nice, smooth, consistent table surface. All right. Okay, so I've got a little pail of water here. It takes a lot of water. And what I'm going to try and do is stretch this material out by pulling it straight down. And you always want to keep your clay vertical. Okay, you don't want to pull it at an angle or horizontal. All right, it will stretch it out and it will become inconsistent in its shape and it will tear. Okay, um, the other thing too is I like to keep my left hand as dry as possible so I can hang on to it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this down and try to stretch it out and then twist it. Okay, and then pull it and then twist it and then pull it and twist. Pull and twist. The twisting helps keep it symmetrical. You want to keep this symmetrical for now. Okay? And it's just a really kind of quick action. Okay? So I'm just going to pull it, twist, pull, twist, pull, twist. And you can see, <laughs> you can see I'm kind of tapering it out. Okay? See that? So I've got this really nice shape. It's tapered down. All right, now, technically, you could leave your handle in this cylindrical shape, but I like mine to be flat so that it's a little easier to kind of grab, right? So that's why I have this little um, plasti bat here. I'm going to put some water down. Can you see? <clears throat> okay, and I'm going to take my hand, and I'm just going to kind of compress it flat, but not too hard so that I, sm I don't want to, like, smear it into the bat, okay? And I'll kind of turn it over. And now I've got this nice kind of tapered handle. See that? Okay, and this is a pretty good width, too. You don't need it much wider than that. Okay, a, a handle that's too wide, it's hard to grab onto. So you're going to begin to understand these proportional relationships and how your process affects those relationships, okay? So again, you're, you're going to have to make like probably 15 or 20 of these, which is why we're putting these on your cups that aren't so good, right? As I'm asking you so that we can learn how to do this stuff so that when you're making, throwing really nice pots and trimming really nice feet, you have really nice handles to put on them. Okay? So, all right. The next thing, I like to put little decorations in mine. Um, and you can see on this handle, uh, well, kind of. <laughs> this is a bad example. Um, no, I don't have any over there. Uh, there's like a little, like, concave print in the handle. You see that? 
Okay, that's just kind of a nice decoration. If they're sharp edges, then they'll pop through the glaze and form a dark line, which is actually what I'm trying to do. Um, so anyways, what I'll do is I'll use my thumb and I'll just like kind of create that, that divot. All right, and then I create these edge. And then I'll just kind of smooth and work out my edges and put it into shape. Yay. Okay, see that? All right, this is actually a pretty long handle. Now, the next thing I want to do is put it into shape. Okay, and this is the tricky part. So what, what I do is I'll just kind of change my grip. See that? Okay, I flip my hand, and that helps me turn this around, okay, and put it into shape. <laughs> so I'll just line all these up. So, you know, however many pots I have, I'll just line up a bunch of handles, go trim my pots, come back. By the time I'm done trimming my pots, my handles are usually ready to put on. Okay, let me do that again. All right, so I'm going to pull it and twist, pull it and twist. And you can see how it stretches and tapers the material. And that's all I need, just that little bit. Okay, and then I like to flatten mine out. Ooh. Sometimes you'll get like little blemishes. You, you definitely want to smooth out your blemishes um, because that will be a weak spot in the clay and it'll crack. All right. And also, if you have like a thick to thin to thick area, okay, that inconsistency, it's not going to loop and make a really nice shape. It's going to bend at that thin spot. So you really want to practice trying to create a consistent tapered um, shape. Okay, so again, I'm just going to use my thumb. Okay, I could also use my fingers like this. All right, see that? Then I kind of create this really kind of sharp edge. See that? Can you guys? Okay. And then I always want to smooth these edges out. So I'll just kind of go over it again with my hand. And the problem is, is that if you have really sharp edges on your handles, when it's clay, it doesn't really affect your grip. But when it becomes a ceramic, it's going to be like a knife edge. And it's very uncomfortable. So you want to make sure that you just kind of smooth out your edges a little bit and calm them down. Okay? And again, I'll just kind of flip my grip. Flip my grip. Okay? And there we go. I put it into shape. Voila. Voila. Right? Okay? You got it? So I prefabricated some of these other pots and uh, or, uh, handles. So now I'm going to stick them on to my pots. You are now going to do this to every one of your pots. Every one. Okay. You all right? <laughs> okay, so um, now typically if you okay if your if your pot is too dry where it's chalky on the surface you're not going to get a good bond with your handle. And it might stick now, but as soon as it dries on the greenware shelf, it's just going to pop off. Okay, you're going to lose the bond, it's going to fall off. All right? So what we need to do is use a glue that we call slip. <laughs> All right? Just the same word as we use for the colored slips, right? Okay, it's interchangeable language. You just have to pick up on the context we're using it in, all right? And it'll become really obvious, okay? When we're talking about paint and decorations, we're talking colored slip, slip, okay? When we're talking joining pieces of our clay body together, we're talking this slip. It's technically the same thing. It's liquid clay, okay? I'll show you how to make this, but in a subsequent class. I don't want to take that much time. Um, there's also brushes, these kind of crappy short hair brushes. Okay, these are the only brushes you w I want you to use with the slip. Okay, with the clay body slip. Do not use the long haired bristle brushes with this slip. It will destroy them. Okay, the long haired bristle brushes are only for, the hockey brushes are only for the colored slips. Okay, I've got this cup right here on the table. Arda, can you lift that up? Yeah, it's got, yeah, can you show the camera? 
All right, perfect. All right, cool. I hope they can see that. All right, anyways. Okay, that's, al that's always filled with these crappy brushes. And these are really great brushes to apply the clay body slip. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to pick up my pot. All right, if I have slip on my pot, okay, I'm going to show you how to connect your handle without messing up your slip work. I like to put my slip work on first so that my handle is a totally separate, different color from the rest of the pot. And it just kind of sets it off a little bit. Okay, that's my choice. Okay. You can put your handle on and then slip. Okay. If you're going to put slip on your handles, you need to be careful not to oversaturate your handles or they'll crumble and fall apart. Okay. You'll get used to it. All right. So what do I do first? I'm going to take my trusty little needle tool and I'm going to take this handle and you can see it's pretty, it's pretty dried up. I usually like it a little bit stiffer, but whatever. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm just going to kind of take my finger like this and I want to cut this and I'm going to cut it around the curve. So I put it in that curve so that it's already curved around to meet my cup. Okay, and that'll make more sense. So I'm just going to kind of support my handle and then cut it. Yay. Now the other thing too is that this is a little bit big. So I'm just going to cut a nice little, whoa, a nice little tab, right? See that parabolic shape? Okay, that'll create a really nice shape at the bottom of my cup. Now the next part I want to do is I just want to compress the top part of my handle a little bit. And what that does is it makes a little tab. Okay, if you were to just put your handle on with the thickness of the handle, that would not really make a great bond. Okay, there's not a whole lot of surface area there. But if I turn this, and that's why I loop it, I can use the thickness of the handle, compress it, and create a bigger surface area to connect to the pot. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then I'll take some of the slip, which is my glue, on top and bottom. Some people will score their pot. They'll create like little hash marks in their pots. Uh, I used to teach that. As long as your, if your mug is leather hard, you don't really need to do that. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to compress I'm just going to stick my pot, my um, handle on there, and I want to compress the top, okay, and get kind of a nice connection. And then I want to loop this around, okay, see that? And I want to make sure it's straight, okay? You don't want like a crooked handle. And some people do put crooked handles on them, and it's like a, you know, a design thing, but they don't work that well, and they're not very comfortable. Okay, I'll leave those decisions to you, but for now, for your mug project, I want them straight. Okay? All right, so <clears throat> I make sure it's straight. I get, I compress that clay. And you can see right here, like I've got a really nice shape. Okay, it's not all choppy. Okay, that's really important. And you, and the other thing too is I want you to recognize is I'm not touching in my handles that much. I'm not overworking them. If you, if you touch your handles, too often, you'll put a whole lot of fingerprints in them and you'll mess up the shape that you pulled. So the idea of when you're putting on handles is to be as efficient with your touch as possible. All right, because if you have dirty, wet hands, you'll get crap all over the surface of your pot and it'll be a distraction. All right, so you want to try and be as clean as possible. So now that I've got a pretty good connection, or bless you, now that I've got a pretty good connection here, all right, I, I just want to clean up this excess slip. Okay, see that? Okay. All right, and then I'm going to take my tool here, and you can see how I have this kind of haphazard looking line for the top. It's also really thick. So I'm just going to kind of get rid of that. All right, and not kind of get rid of it. I'm going to get rid of it. Okay. See, now I've got a general shape, and if I compress that with my thumb, I'll get a really nice taper and a really nice line. Okay, it's going to be a really nice clean line. 
And that's what I want because that's what's going to interact with the glaze surface. Now, you guys don't understand that yet, but when we start glazing and firing these pots, it'll definitely make more sense. Okay, and if you have to go back and clean some of the goo and, and inconsistencies, then please do. All right, so there we go. That's a pretty good shape. I like my shapes to be a little bit different. I like mine to angle down. So, there we go. Woohoo. You want to see slip here? Okay, if you want to clean that up, you can take like a wet brush, sorry, and you can just kind of clean that up a little bit. I usually like to see that, um, the little slip bead, you know, where the slip kind of oozed out. I like to see that on my cups, but that, that's a choice that you can make. Okay, very good. If you get some fingerprints there, you can just kind of smooth that out. All right? Put my cup down. Go to my next one. Okay, same thing. I'm just going gonna, gonna to cut the shape of the bottom of my handle first. Okay? And then I can lift my handle off like this. And that's what I got. Okay? Then I need to press my tab into my handle. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay? Now this I have to be a little bit more cautious and a little bit more clean. All right, I'm going to try and set up my handle shape first before I put it on so that I don't have to do any touch-up work. Okay, I can just kind of put it on. Okay, slippage. And you don't want to be reserved with your slip. You want to goo it on there. It's like a toothbrush, you know. Hey, are you are you heavy toothpaste users? Or are you skimmers? Heavy. Heavy? I'm, I'm kind of medium heavy. You know? Alright. So here we go. I'm looking for this area. I'm going to put my handle right there because I put a blemish there. So I'm going to hide it with my handle. Okay, and I'm just going to, again, compress it on there. Oh yeah. And the reason why I want to kind of set my handle shape up is because I don't want to clean this up and mess up my slip work. I want to try and keep it perfectly clean transition. And that takes practice. Okay? So there we go. I make sure I get a good loop. Look at my shape. I kind of like that handle. It's kind of really nice and clean. Okay? And I'm going to leave that slip there. Mm. I don't want to clean that up. And I'm going to leave my loop kind of pointed up this time. I kind of like that with this cup. It looks kind of nice. Okay? But I do want to clean up my fingerprint. So I'll just take some water. Get rid of the cracks. Okay? And there we go. Now, let's just say I'm done. I've, I've done all my cups. Okay? I said, hey, come check out my cups. And I'm going to be like, whoa, these are great. Or fix this. Okay, once we agree that they're done, I'm going to ask you then to put them and line them up on the greenware shelf, just like we did. Oh, wait, no, that's next. Sorry, I'm not thinking straight. Um, actually, what you want to do is I prefer to cover up my pots when I put handles on them, at least overnight. So... Okay, a lot of times what will happen is that we're all finishing mugs together and we'll line up everyone's mugs together and then I'll cover them with plastic so that this, because this sets up and creates a really good bond. If you just kind of let it soak under plastic, you know, it strengthens the bond. If you just let this stuff dry, it can sometimes not bond very well and pop off even after you fired, okay? I had the unfortunate mistake of a gallery um, t having an order of a bunch of my mugs and I was kind of rushing through the construction process to get them done on time and after the gallery owner sold all of my mugs, the handles started popping off. Mm -hmm. It was incredibly embarrassing and she had to buy back all the mugs, okay? So to prevent that from happening, I've changed my process to always 
just you know, I'll line all my pots up on a board or on a table and then cover them with plastic, and then I'll just come back the next day and uncover them, okay? So as a class, together, if we're finishing a lot of mugs, then what we'll do is we'll line them up and I'll cover them with plastic at the end of class, and then we'll come back the next day and uncover them and then just let them dry, okay? If you're by yourself, put them back on your board and cover them up with your other work. And then you can either come back the next day and put them on the greenware shelf and let them dry, or you can just come back the next class, okay? I prefer, if you can, to come back the next day and get them on the greenware shelf so that we can get stuff dry and through the firing process, okay? Because I cannot fire unless you guys finish your work, okay? All right, I know that's a lot of information, but from here on out, okay, I need you guys to put trim feet and put handles on every... Thing you make. The other point I want to stress, do not throw away anything you make, including if it's a little wobbly, okay? You need those pots to trim and to put handles on, okay? It's not just about throwing on the wheel. Remember, we're making vessel shapes. We're making functional vessels. The wheel is just one part. It's a tool we use for one part of the entire process, okay? Everyone with me? Does anyone have any questions? Okay, and that's what we're going to do for the rest of the day. I'm going to post this video um, so that you'll have access to it.